Now, as mentioned before, we have teams from the College of the Bahamas, and their coordinator is Professor Ruth Gardner. Will Ruth stand, please? Monroe College, and their coordinator is Professor St. Clair Thompson. <laughs> Turks and Caicos Islands Community College, and their coordinator is Michelle Hoston. <laughs> and the University of Technology of Jamaica, and their coordinator is Ms. Watson. Now, just to quickly take us through the housekeeping, we've got the four teams, and they'll go on stage, and they will make their presentations. And we ask everyone to, during the presentations, to be silent, because it is quite nerve-wracking up there, and sometimes the sound effects can just make people a bit more nervous. So if we can be quiet through the presentations, and then once they've completed their presentation, we will then um, applaud them and give each, time, each team time to set up. Now, um, especially for the judges, um, each team now, they have, um, well, it says at 10 minutes, the first bell will ring. And again, at the 11th minute, after the 11th minute, points will be deducted. I do hate to say that before you make a presentation, but I think it's important you know. So you've got to stick to the guidelines. Now, timekeeping, will our timekeeper please stand, Roxanne? This young lady is responsible for the timekeeping, so she's got to make sure that we remain on track. So with that, let's go. Now, the first team, I've got a list in front of me, but last year I got this wrong. Is the first team the College of the Bahamas? Yes, good, right, I got it right this time. Well, welcome on stage. This meeting is now called to order. Islands of limestone and pristine beaches nestled in crystal clear waters showcasing breathtaking trails with a rich collage of history and wonders. Visualize your footprints leading the way and your stair meeting ancient monuments of the islands of the Caribbean. Your arrival at one of the most fascinating destinations in the world is your departure from everyday mundane life. Envision the Caribbean. Envision trailblazers, tours, and excursions limited. Fellow executive board members, fellow colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. As president, I am pleased to welcome each of you to the 2015 Trailblazers Tours and Excursions Annual Business Conference. As a leading tour company within the Caribbean, we are based in the Bahamas on the beautiful island of New Providence. We have a vision to be leaders and paysetters of indigenous heritage tourism and a mission to provide you, our clients, with unforgettable tours that are enjoyable and informative. Now, perhaps you're wondering, what is our marketing strategy for this awesome product? But first, today our, our objective will be to discuss our marketing strategy. Secondly, to discuss our financial and sustainability plan. And thirdly, to discuss our unbeatable tour offers. Well, I call on my able VP of Marketing. Thank you, President. Good afternoon, President, and my fellow colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Vice President of Marketing, Derencio Roll Davis. Trailblazer's target market is mainly the European traveler. The countries our tours are centralized on were all colonized by a European country. Britain colonized the Bahamas. Spain took Cuba, and we all know that France colonized Haiti. Catering to Europeans will allow them to participate in our two-week-long tours, relishing their 14-day holidays. However, special rates will be offered to our Caribbean people. 
We intend on reaching our target market via our website, trailblazerslimited.com, social media outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, direct emails to potential clients, television and magazine ads such as Times UK, and of course, through word of mouth. Have you guys seen this app? Uh, I was going through Google Playlist and I saw this amazing app. I heard the sound ship of steamships. Even I saw visuals of the Pompeii Square in the Bahamas. Where did this come from? Whose app is this? Mr. President, this is ingenious. Tony, that is our app. Oh, th that's why it said Trailblazers app. Yes. As Tuni, our talk coordinator mentioned, we have an amazing app available for smartphones. With this technology, clients are able to have more engaging tours because the app allows for exciting audio sounds and captivating images of slave ruins, religious, and political figures. And if that isn't enough, our app is also available in a variety of languages. So perhaps you're wondering, where are we going to find all the money to finance our projects? I now call on Leslie, our VP of Finance, to present his report. Gracias, Senorita Roll Davis. Thanks so much, Ms. Roll Davis. You know, it's indeed a job and a half to put a price on the invaluable memories like the ones we here at Trailblazers help you, our guests, create. Even so, our profits help to tell just part of the story of how happy you will be with us. We'll be making $176,000 a year. That's a 25% profit in the first year alone. 750 guests a year is our break-even point. But if we double that number, we can triple our profit. But one of the things of which we here at Trailblazers are most proud is not our profit but our commitment to the things that matter, like sustainable development. This year, we managed to strike an unprecedented three deals with the governments of Haiti, the Bahamas, and Cuba to revitalize the sites featured on our trails in exchange for the reduction of rates for the exclusive use of these sites. But the most important of our efforts is the fact that we have placed more than 200 recycle bin sets at or near the sites featured on our trails. Because Trailblazers gives back to the Caribbean through giving back to the planet. The recycled materials will be used to create anything from syringes for youth with AIDS in Haiti, or slides for parks in the Bahamas and Cuba. You already know us as a world-class organization dedicated to giving you, our guests, experiences that last a lifetime. But yet, you may be sitting and wondering, what exactly is this exciting new product? So let's all welcome our competent tours coordinator, Ms. Tony Bethel, as she gives you all the details. Merci on pew, Leslie. You're Thank so kind. Thank you, Leslie. We here at Trailblazers specialize in selling political, slavery, and religious heritage trails through the Bahamas, Cuba, and Haiti. Departing the beautiful islands of the Bahamas, you will journey on a 14-day tour excursion. Our religious heritage trail highlights prominent religious leaders, their burial sites, and historical churches, such as Christ Church Cathedral in the Bahamas, the Catholic Archdiocese of Havana, Cuba, and the Theophil Church in Haiti. Light will also be shared on the evolution of religion dating back to the 1800s. On our political tour, you will journey to the House of Parliament in the Bahamas, the People's Power in Cuba, and the Assembly Nationale in Haiti, where you will be treated to a refreshing, mouth-watering Bahama Mama beverage. This trail also provides information on prominent religious leaders who have fought for the rights of their nation, such as Sir Lyndon Pinley, Jose Marti, and Michael Martelli. Ladies and gentlemen, when we take you to Pompeii Square and Clifton Heritage in the Bahamas, Las Terrazas in Cuba, 
and the citadel in Haiti, your experience will be incomparable to any other. This is why we have created alliances with hotels such as the Atlantis in the Bahamas, Coleco Beach Club in Haiti, and Hotel Nacional in Cuba. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set. The booking lines are open for those of you who are interested, which I am sure most of you are. We have a trail that leaves at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Please feel free to contact me at tourist coordinator at trailblazers.com. Ladies and gentlemen, all that's left to say when we think about the tours, are we have beautiful tours in our Caribbean. With our extensive marketing strategy, we are sure to hit all the right niches. And a strong business plan sure to hit all the right numbers. Our trails will leave you so excited you may not even want to leave. And of course, that's not enough. That Bahama Mama sure will hit the right spot. All that's left to say is... Come one. Come all. One sea. One voice. One Caribbean. Come enjoy Trailblazers Tours and Excursions. So once again, let's hear it for the College of the Bahamas. We're going to move straight on now to the second team, and this is Monroe College. Deo, me so deo, till I come and me want go home. Come, Mr. Tallyman, tell me banana. Did I come and me want go home? Come, Mr. Tallyman, tell me banana. Did I come and me want go home? Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Did I come and me want go home? Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Did I come and me want go home? Distinguished guests, honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, from Zambia, I am Sindim Pandey, Director of Sales and Marketing. Hailing from Nevis, I am Denisia Smithen, your Director of Guest Services. And from Ireland, my name is Owen O'Donoghue, your Director of Food and Beverage. And from Jamaica, my name is Deborah Hort, your General Manager. Simply beautiful St. Lucia is rich in its history and culture. First inhabited by the Arawak Indians, then superseded by the Caribs, this natural beauty was fought over many years over 14 times by the Europeans, thus giving her the name Helen of the West Indies. Banana continues to play a pivotal role as an export earner for St. Lucia. It is therefore timely. In recognition of the past and present, we pay homage to the rich culture of St. Lucia by presenting our venture, La Fuite de, de Helen. Helen. Our venture is located on the southeast of St. Lucia and based on a banana estate in Mahu Mikud. La Fuite de Helen will feature eight eagle cottages, organic green garden and fruit orchard, a restaurant which will also be used for our lunch workshops, and a gift shop which will feature locally made products. Our concept is based on Nuka Mange, Sanuka Plante, et Nuka Plante, Sanuka Mange which I learned means we eat what we grow, and we grow what we eat. Our guests will be transported via helicopter from the Hewanawa International Airport, some 10 minutes away from La Fuite de Helene. Upon arrival to the property, our guests will be served refreshing lime squash and banana chips. After check-in, our guests will be escorted to their eco cottages. We will now hear about our target audience and how we will reach them. We will target dedicated culinary tourists from the US, UK, and Caribbean as they accounted for 80% of all visitor arrivals to St. Lucia in 2014. Special attention will be paid to Martinique as this island was recently accepted as an associate member to the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. We will also target cruise visitors, local groups and residents, as well as couples and advertising in-flight publications, food magazines and blogs, to restaurants and local tour operators. 
Owen will now give us our gastronomic package. Absolutely, Zinzi. You know, based on this rich culture and diverse history, we developed a culinary invasion package. Six nights accommodation at one of our great eco cottages, complimentary breakfast, culinary workshops, and island discovery activities are some of the key highlights of the guest stay. In all of our culinary workshops, guests will be brought through the history of Lucian cuisine by the guidance of our local and celebrity chefs. And Owen, speaking of celebrity chefs, allow me to introduce a dedicated culinary educator who, like the premise of La Fuite de Helene, believes that one should enjoy the moment whenever they are cooking, Chef Pelizari. Join me for this European workshop where you will experience the passion that my grandfather and my mother had for good food. I welcome you to La Fruit de Lens, where we eat what we grow. Bon appétit. Merci. Thank you, Chef P. After orientation on day one, the guests will experience the Amerindian cuisine on day two in our first culinary workshop. The Amerindians thrived on seafood, corn, and cassava as their main sources of food. Guests will be able to participate in a fishing trip in local Mikud using a traditional fire pit method, roasted veggies from our organic garden will be added to this fresh catch of the day. Guests will be preparing one of the more popular dishes of the Caribs, a stew made of crab meat, cassava, and tomlin sauce. Now tomlin sauce is made of lemon juice, pepper, and also crab meat. On third day, in our second culinary workshop, we pay homage to the Europeans' influence on St. Lucia. The Lucians adopted the French cooking styles by paying great attention to detail of food preparation and presentation. The use of spices, for example, is essential. The right amount is used to correctly flavor and color the dish. Guests will also be demonstrated the flambe technique when we have them prepare our tasty banana flambe for dessert. But the fun does not stop there. Denicia, can you describe our island discovery experience? Sure, Owen. Europeans have a passion for wine consumption and will not be disappointed with our unique sailing experience on the Sunset Cruise. Our guests will interact with our wine steward on the production of one-of-a-kind locally made wines and sample them while engulfed in the panoramic views of the Twin Petons. Cindy, tell us about African Day. Certainly, Denicia. Given that St. Lucia consists of 90.5% African descendants, on day four, we will feature our West African lunch workshop. While the plantation owners kept the best cuts of meats for themselves, the slaves created their own cuisine, which was influenced by popular West African dishes by using the edible leftovers. Therefore, our guests will use our edible... Guests will, use, will be making our tasty gumbo with cuckoo and okra. Denicia, what will happen later that afternoon? Our guests will participate in discovering the island. They will be taken to the Latil Waterfall in Mikud for a tour where they will enjoy the tranquil sounds of nature while being fed at a picnic. Deborah, what about day five? Day five is our Creole lunch workshop. The presence of the African and the French led to Patois, a broken French language. Using Lucian cooking techniques, chefs are going to demonstrate the cooking of vegetables underground. Vegetables will be laid on a banana leaf, covered with dried coconut shells, and heat will be applied using bamboo charcoal. For lunch, guests are going to feast on our sumptuous banana leaf steamed snapper with roasted breadfruit, eggplant, and spinach. But that's not all we have for Creole Day, Denicia. Don't we have more in the afternoon? Yes, Deborah. Our guests will visit the Leeward and Windward Brewery in Vufort for a tour, then venture to two locally owned rum shops in Mikud for rum tasting. Owen, what about day six? You know, Denicia, on day six, instead of a workshop, we have guests participating in a dine around program visiting three local hotel restaurants. This gives guests from these hotels the opportunity to dine at our Banana Pliche restaurant. Is there more entertainment, did you see? Yes, Owen. And one of the unique experiences of St. Lucia is the fish fry event. We believe in Nuka Manje, Sanuka Plante, Ek Nuka Plante, Sanuka Manje. Everybody join me. We, we eat, eat what, what we grow, grow and we grow what we eat. eat.
Therefore, our guests will visit the fish fry at Ansler Way, where they will further experience the Lucian cuisine. On day seven, our guests will participate in the planting of fruits and vegetables, which is pivotal to the sustainability of our project. Later in the evening, our guests will depart La Fouy de Helene. We will now hear about the other sustainable practices our project will feature. Our eight eco cottages will have many sustainable features. Electricity and water heating will be provided by our, by our solar panel field and water will be pumped from our cistern. Some of the furniture will be made from banana byproducts and recycled wood will be used in the construction of our facility. There will be a strong focus on biodegradable and recyclable amenities in the guest cottages. But that's not all sustainability we have. Owen, what about our restaurant? Deborah, the banana pliche restaurant will also be environmentally conscious. We will save our waste cooking oil to be turned into biodiesel fuel, which we will then use in our own transportation vehicles. We will supplement our organic garden and orchard by composting food waste and the use of an efficient water irrigation system. We will open up our doors to not just our guests, but local residents to increase our revenue and exposure of our sustainable practices. But that's not all. We have a better and a brighter future planned for La Fouy de Helene. We will participate in food festivals such as St. Lucia Food and Rum Festival and Jeanne Creole Day, both held in October. Based on our financial projections, we will contribute 10% of our modest profits to the construction of a public market in Mahu, as well as contribute funds to secondary school students with an interest in culinary arts. Within five years, we intend to build two more eco-cottages and a test kitchen to attract regional and international students from culinary programs. We implore you to come experience this gastronomic tourism product in a place that is rich in history and tasty cuisine. Come to La Fuida Helene and experience locally grown fruits and vegetables. Hands-on workshops that demonstrate unique Lucian techniques. While relaxing in a quaint tropical climate on a banana estate in simply, simply beautiful, beautiful St. Lucie. Then we'll go down to Fuya. Then the pitos all the way up there. Sky rise, we all up in the air. When we glide in down the people chair, everybody clapping hands and they shouting out. Let's hear it for Monroe College. Deborah, Denisha, Owen, and Zinzi. Moving on with the program, we would now like to invite the Turks and Caicos Islands Community College to join us on stage. How you feel you doing that tourism test? Girl, I bust that up. Hey, you always see this good hat I wearing for Crab Fast 8. Yo, Shakir, you always hit up. Hey, I look good. Look at this. Look at this hat. Look hey, at this man, y'all. What are you doing down the road already? Listen, don't worry about she that. She gossiping. Gossiping. Let's get a sink to tourist board, though. What Which thing? thing? The lime fish thing. Oh, the proposal. Yeah. That makes sense, you know. Plenty sense. Because y'all know we Caribbean people love two things, cultural festival and food. And, and don't forget, forget the rhythm, rhythm and the rum. rum. And when you put all these things together, we get our regional annual Lionfish Festival, a nonprofit organization. Danielle, let me tell you this, girl. For the last 10 years, look at me. 10 years, lionfish have been wreaking havoc on a serene marine life. 10 years, you know. Wow. In Calencia, they eat everything. They're carnivores. They eat crustacean. That's the lobster. Not my sweet lobster. They eat small fish. Commercial fish, such as the Nassau grouper and the snapper. Boy. Those fish are what we used to export. We survive off of those. Man, Cece, and they found all over, around the United States, the Bahamas, Cuba, St. Lucia, and let me tell you this. And Don't say Turks, Turks and Caicos. The Turks and Caicos Islands as well. We need to do something about this. We need to eradicate these predators. We need to have our regional, annual Lionfish Festival. Yeah. Cece, you need to tell us about this event. We Lionfish Festival ain't no small things, you know. Big turn up, I say. Oh, All right. Cool. This festival can be implemented in any Caribbean country, but let's use the beautiful by nature islands of the Turks and Caicos as an example. 
Firstly, we suggest a collaboration with the Department of Environmental and Coastal Resources and our local Ministry of Tourism as teamwork is key. So you mean with Honorable Portia Stubb Smith? Yes. She read over there, you know. Okay. I know. Secondly, a board of directors will be appointed to organize, plan, and implement We Lionfish Festival down to the T. Because we need leaders. Yes, okay. and this is also because sustainability is key. And I mean sustainability. We have to keep it running. Yes. Okay. Annually. Annually. During the first year, the business goals are to keep profit margins high for success and continuous awareness of lionfish and the danger it brings to our coral reefs. Calencia, this is where it gets juicy. Good time. Let me entice Good you time. on what to expect from a festival such as ours. All right. The weekend's festivities begin on Friday night at our fundraising debriefing cocktail, where all participants get to mingle and learn more about what is expected from them. So we made our nice dress. dress. Nice. nice dresses. No, then like Saturday it. sunrise, boats out to sea, to catch the lionfish. On Leeward Duck? On Leeward Duck. Oh, I live close here. Oh, yeah. yeah then yeah, Saturday yeah. sunset, boats in to count the lionfish. For all of us? For all of us, plus more. No, all of y'all, get that right. Lazy. <laughs> Shakia, on Sunday, this is where all culinary artists get a chance to create delicate lionfish dishes. The food, I like the food. Daniela, I bet you thought you could eat lionfish, eh? Y'all eat that thing first, eh? I could try that, of course. All right. This event will take place on Grace Bay Beach, the number one beach in the Caribbean by TripAdvisor. Yeah. This event will also include door prizes, displays about lionfish in our reefs, souvenirs, and all things lionfish will be on sale. So we could buy all of that? Yes, you could buy all of these things on this table. You see these beautiful lionfish keychains that we have? Wow, so okay. pocket money. Boredom is not an option, as you will be entertained by our popular DJs and local Are you artists. Are you DJ Shakes! Big party in our backyard, I say. Guess what? All proceeds will go towards research, funding the event, and continuous educational drives. It ain't going in our pockets. That's good. Calencia, please tell them about our market analysis. Well, Selene. We, we have broken down and analyzed three divisions of the types of persons who are interested in this type of festival. Okay. We have the geographical, psychographical, and age division as displayed on the screen. Fortunately for us, our core market exists in all of these. Okay. Now, Shakia, you may wonder which route we're going to take in order to market this event. I just was going to ask you. Our key marketing strategy includes press contact, telemarketing, on-site marketing, targeted advertisements, flyers, brochures, and programs. All of that? We will also incorporate radio and PSAs, as well as our very own website and database. Oh, okay. And girls with our own song and all. Let's, Let's hear, hear it. it. Wait till the end. Right, she right. likes that aside. We will also have our fundraising strategies. We will have our startup donor drives, our monthly revenues, and grants. Okay. Even though we may view this as a competitive analysis, we are not here to compete, but we are here to educate and promote the danger of this unwanted marine predator and find ways to eliminate them. Okay. That's the main So rule. therefore, you wouldn't want it to clash with our local festivals, such as Fish Fry or Battle of the Bands, or any other lionfish festival held in any other Caribbean island suffering from this invasion. Okay. So therefore, we must work in unison in order to save our coral reefs. Mm -hmm. Now, Daniela, tell me how we're going to attack this plan financially. Bar money sounds good, doesn't it, Calencia? Mm -hmm. But that's only until it's time for it to be paid back, plus those high interest rates. Boy, you ain't lying. So, CC, the, with the running of this festival, it is intended that no loans be taken out. Okay. Fun Shakia, calm down. Funds will be raised by hosting a donorship membership drive, whereby donations can come in from $10,000 to as low as $50. So anybody can donate? Anybody can donate. Wow. Other funds can be raised by fundraisers such as walkathons, parties, and dinners, a $40 entrance ticket fee sales, memorabilia sales, and a fixed $600 yearly government grant. We have to get some from them. We have to get some from them. Of course. See now, Shakia, Kylencia wanted to borrow that money. 
Imagine this. Year one is estimated to be $18,000. $18,000? $18,000. $18, you know what we can do with that money? Expand the research. We need to educate. Yes. Year two is expected to be a 53% increase. Year three is expected to be a 60% increase. You see what I mean? We need to borrow no money. No money. This organization aims to keep all of its expenses low. So therefore, year one's total expense is only estimated to be $3,500. That's, that's small it. change. That's Pocket change. money. I got that few. Yeah, man, give me some of the research. I ain't got no money right now, though. Stop, man. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Year two is estimated to be a 74% increase, and year three is estimated to be a 54% increase. Now, although CC, these percentages increase tremendously, each year is said to bring in a high profit margin. So you have to spend some to get some. Spend some to get some. Okay. Calencia, I heard you, I just know you heard Shakia said that the lionfish are invading the southeast coast of the United States. Where else, Shakia? The Bahamas. The Bahamas. Cuba. Cuba. The Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico. And Turks and Caicos. And our very own Turks and Caicos Islands. Valencia, what are some of the benefits coming out of this festival? Well, Daniela, the aim of such a festival is to create a market for lionfish fillet, creating a sustainable fishery resulting in eradication. Okay. Now, we don't intend to host a festival for hosting its sake, but rather to be beneficial to all regions. Yeah. Now, if such a festival comes, the promotion of East Destinations culture. Now, Daniela, imagine Boy. the Jama Jamaicans going to Trinidad. Be on that flight. The Trinis going to the Bahamas. Idea. And them Bahamians coming to our very own Turks and Caicos Islands. Six Island. four nine. And two, you know four, they two. like us. We are one, one Caribbean, one, one voice. voice. Now, the best part about this festival is that it will decrease and hopefully eliminate this unwanted marine predator. And guess what? We're not flying with. We're flying with local or regional providers, making sure that all funds stay within the Caribbean. Yeah. Now, Shakia, I know this will be well supported by our Caribbean people, because like I said, we Caribbean people like okay. two things, festival and food. And, and don't, don't forget, forget the rhythm and the rum. Catch the lionfish, catch the lionfish, catch the lionfish, be ready. I'm sure we are all accustomed to the present day Jamaica when it comes to rum, athletics, reggae music, and of course, our beautiful beaches. However, have you ever asked yourself, hmm, do I really know what makes Jamaica the amazing place it is today? Come with us, Racine Hamilton, Dana Malcolm, Javier Simmons, and Wayneish Brown from the University of Technology, Jamaica as we carry you on our culturally enriching Memory Lane Adventure Tour. Memory Lane Adventure Tour is a, a tour complement outfit that will actually carry around the Kingston metropolitan area. To experience the diverse culture and the rich heritage of Kingston and St. Catherine and St. Andrew. Survey said that as of 2013, there has been immediate and potential growth in the adventure and tourism market. We have noted that there has been a 65% growth per annum since that year as well. Why would Jamaica, a country that is much more than sun, sea, and sand, not capitalize on this? Well, 
the team at Memory Lane Adventure Tours has been inspired, dare I say motivated, to develop a tour product that will show Jamaica in a new light. And we will show you the rich culture, the heritage, and the history that makes our country special and extraordinary. So sit back and enjoy as we loop you through an exciting three-day, four-night excursion highlighting three history-rich parishes, that is Kingston, St. Andrew, and St. Catherine. Come, feel the vibration of our warm and hospitable people. This, this is, is our, our Memory Lane Adventure, Adventure Tours. We will explore a designated heritage site. Um, it entails the Giddy House and the Naval Museum, which up to this day holds some of the greatest artifacts from the 1650, courtesy of the British. You'll see anchors and old cannons. Lastly, a day is not complete without eating from the delicious eateries at the Port Royal Seaport Town. Here, you can eat a tantalizing lunch at the Why Not Bar and a delicious dinner at the World Without Glorious Restaurant. Simply scrumptious. And on the second day, we'll take you off the beaten track to the lovely St. Catherine. This is where we will start to explore our monumental sites in the famous St. Jago de la Vega. Experience a stroll along the oldest bridge in the Western Hemisphere. Can you believe it? And why not snap a selfie? Who would have thought you'd be so adventurous? You, touring the, actually the first area of commerce in this historic island, the old Spanish town square. The half mile walking tour of the square is about 255 years ago. And we will start at the old King's house which is currently in use today as the parish council building. Then, we'll take a walk over to the old assembly house, where you can snap a few more selfies and be enveloped in the history that is present there. After this, you will walk to the Rodney's Memorial, which is probably the most spectacular and significant monument in the, court, pardon, in the courtyard. Here, Admiral Rodney is outfitted in a Roman toga, and this is almost 215 years old. Can you imagine? The excitement not done yet. Now journey to the largest orange orchard in, in Jamaica, covering 1,100 acres in Jamaica. This is in Bagua. Trade wind thicket, the fresh fruit patches home prepares a fresh fruit thicker seed. As a matter of fact, after a long day, I am sure you'll be definitely walking home with your own two beats made by you. St. Catherine is also a busy industrial center and several minerals are also found here, including bauxite, one of the top earnings in the economy. Wind if this is also found in Newtown, the home of Lindalco Bauxite Plant. It takes you on a tour, a spectating tour, to view the intricate processes of the bauxite production. Well, no day is complete without a trip to the coffee shop for lunch. We will stop to the pioneer for the Jamaican coffee. Tasty is this. Once here, you can indulge in a juicy, golden, flaky beef, mm. even chicken and vegetable patty. <laughs> and we will conclude our day at Prendy's on the beach, a seaside eatery that is really popular in Jamaica. Then, after dinner, we'll join at the bonfire, where we will indulge in delicious Jamaican beverages, such as genuine Jamaican hot chocolate, blue mountain coffee, black mint tea, and we'll sit around the bonfire while our memory lane adventure tour staff tell you stories about our history and even doppy stories. 
our third day will bring us to the, to the nation's capital, Kingston and St. Andrew, the cultural mecca of Jamaica and the musical mecca of the world. Home to the legendary Bob Marley, we will be starting our tour at the legendary Tuff Gong Studios, owned by the Marley family. Tuff Gong Studios is the only state-of-the-art studio of its kind in the Caribbean. Here, you can take even more selfie with the legend's very own musical instrument. You'll be able to even witness the production of vinyl records. Here, now, journey to Trenchtown Cultural Yard. You will enter Bob's house, the exact location in which he and the whalers wrote, No, no woman, no cry. Immersed in the adventure as you travel to War Theatre, a very short stroll in the heart of downtown Kingston. What we'll start with is War Theatre, which is actually a building that was built in 1912. It is not only known for its, clearly, its gorgeous architectural presence, but it's actually been the place where lots of international tour companies has had its shows, including the Dance Theatre of Harlem. Then we'll take it to Liberty Hall, a place built actually in memory of the Marcus Mazziah Garvey. And it used to be the Kingston division of the UNIA, which is the Universal Negro Improvement Association and the African Communities League. Now, I'm sure after all this walking, you are a little tired, maybe wanting something to cool you down? Well, Let's take you to the delicious, well-renowned Devon House. It's listed as the third best place to have ice cream. We have taste from plain vanilla to even Devon Stout. Or we can even jump into a Jamaican meat by having Blue Mountain Coffee, South Sweet Stuff, and even, and even coconut. Let's take a tour to the Georgian-style Devon House, the dream of the first black billionaire, George Kendall. It is also beautiful, it's also a beautiful mansion and it is restored. It's a major tourist of attraction. So, after a long day, we will journey to Red Hill, St. Andrew, a popular eatery for jerk, jerk chicken, jerk pork, and even jerk fish. Then, we will dance the night away at Club Privilege, a well-known club in the heart of New Kingston. You can come here, learn a few moves, bust a one dance, and, and move learn to the beat of our music. And must say that Club Privilege actually has some of our Caribbean's top DJs. Now you need to know what is your return on investment, right? Well, as you can see, our mere startup cost of 305000 to be approximate. However, don't worry about breaking even because in our first year alone, it's estimated that we will make $9 million. And yes, that is in US currency. And remember that this is a very amazing, actually amazing investment because it's, it's low in ecological risk and it is something that embraces our culture, something that I think that our tourism market needs worldwide. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bahamas, um, one of the criterias is originality, and I thought you guys were very original. Incredibly how original you were. I uh, thought the presentation was good too, really nice. Some of you had technical glitches, which happens all the time, but mm, suggestion here is rely more, you know, have the confidence to say what you really mean without relying on, on visual aids. Um, I think it really came home when you guys talked about what it was you were selling, and that came at the end. So it took me a while, or it took us a while to find out what is it they're selling here, and then you talked about it, and I felt maybe that should have come up front. But overall, pretty impressive. So I think you guys did an awesome job. Okay, so the, the second team was Monroe. Um, presenting the La Fouille de Hélène. And um, 
you gave a very brave and fearless intro with your rendition of Deo, <laughs> we must say. Um, and, you know, we got the banana reference. Um, we thought that, you know, maybe you could also have looked at the St. Lucia song, something with relevance actually to St. Lucia um, outside of bananas. It's the same way you kept coming back to the, you know, we eat what we grow and you grow what we eat, you know, in Creole. Um, but we thought also, you know, you guys gave a, a very, very polished presentation, um, the interaction, you had great props, you know, with the table decorations, the interaction between you was good. Um, in terms of the product you presented, it was very well thought out, because although the, the basic concept of an eco-friendly lodge with, you know, culinary demonstrations and workshops is not an original idea, you brought elements from the destination to make it unique and to make it special. So, you know, um, good for that. Um, we're also impressed by the sustainable practices. With the exception of <laughs> the copy of the presentation that you gave us, it should really be double-sided printed, not single-sided <laughs> printed, you know, if we're really getting into sustainability. So, you know, that's, that's one issue. But, you know, kudos, you did a, a great job. Team Turks and Caicos. We thought that it was really interesting that the platform could be shared across multiple countries and even more so across the region. I thought your financials were a little strange. I don't know where you could get a venue for 700 bucks because I'm a New Yorker, but it, maybe it's possible. The, um, we thought the, the coral reef technology was, was really clever and the fact that you looked at um, donor drives throughout the year. Uh, overall, we thought the, the tagline when you got up there that it said, dare to aspire, uh, we thought that was really interesting. Um, your presentation was warm, conversational. Um, the chemistry of the team was really good. We liked, we liked the fact that you guys were, were not presenting to us, but having a conversation amongst yourselves that we were kind of listening in on. And um, we thought that it was not a speech, but showed a lot of enthusiasm about the topic. Okay, and of course, last but not least, Jamaica. And uh, liked the idea, thought the idea was very cool. Um, as a visitor and as someone who sells tourism, uh, you know, to people here in North America, you know, they're looking for other things that are more authentic, like Barry said, that are different. And I think what your product was, was that, it was different. And it's not just a cliche Jamaica. So like that, um, you had some issues, uh, a lot of technological issues, not entirely your fault. And I would say that a little, maybe rehearsing a bit more would have probably helped you. Um, I think you were nervous, uh, probably not confident in what you were saying. And, but I thought, good idea. You guys worked hard and so good. Just before we announce the winners, let's look at the prizes. So um, we have four teams, and the team that um, gained third position, that's the third prize, that's 500, and I have to remember not to say pounds, that's 500 US dollars, and that prize is sponsored by the Caribbean Tourism Organization, and that will go to the establishment which these students are from. Second prize will be four Amazon Kindle Fires HD 7s, you know all the technology. And that is sponsored by City, City Tech Solutions. And we have Carol Ababayo here with us today. Carol, so we'll be calling her in a few minutes. And the first prize is three nights, four days, all-inclusive stay at Coconut Bay, Beach Resort in St. Lucia, that's Coconut Bay Beach Resort and Spa in St. Lucia for the four students and a chaperone plus five tickets on Delta Airlines. The sponsor. <laughs> the sponsor of the accommodation is the Atribo Group and we have Mary Brennan here and she'll be presenting that. And from Delta Airlines, we've got Christine Kennedy with us, and Chris will be presenting that. And then, of course, we have trophies for the winning teams, for the winning team, I should say. 
And that trophy is sponsored by Academy Engraving. But I'm not sure if Frank is here. Is Frank here from Academy Engraving? That's okay. If he's not, we'll ask Hugh Riley, Secretary General, to present that prize. So let us recognize the team that placed fourth today. We want a resounding applause for fourth place. Every team's a winner. Jamaica, fourth place. Third prize will receive for, um, for their establishment, 500 US dollars. Is Mr. Riley here, Hugh Riley? That's on behalf of the CTO. Third prize goes to the Bahamas. <laughs> runner-up, the runner-up team. Winning Kindles, may I ask Carol to join us please as she'll be making that presentation on behalf of City Tech Solutions. Carol Ababio, Managing Director of City Tech Solutions. And she is proud to present second place award to, did I tell you that they were lovely Kindles? Okay. Monroe! <laughs> Can we also ask the coordinator for Monroe to join us, please? Can we have a photograph, please, with Carol? from City Tech Solutions. A great sponsor of the CTO. Let's hear it for City Tech Solutions and of course, the Monroe. We have recognized fourth, third, second. Would somebody assist me by telling me who is the winner? I don't, I don't want to sound like a DJ, but I didn't hear you in the back. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Turrets and Cakers. Please join us. <laughs> Can we have the Turrets and Cakers team up here, also joined by the Minister of Tourism, Hugh Riley, the Junior Minister of Tourism, and we'd like to invite Mary Brennan to join us, Mary representing the Atribor Group. And we'd also like, from Delta Airlines, Christine Kennedy to join us. Oops. And don't forget, this prize is sponsored by Coconut Bay Resort, sorry, Coconut Bay Beach Resort and Spa in St. Lucia. We'd also like to invite, oh, she's here, the representative from St. Lucia to join us, but I see Lorraine is here, and we have Delta Airlines. So please join me once again in congratulating Turrets and Cakers, a hard-fought battle.